Hey everybody, thanks for joining me this afternoon. I've got a great stream with some great guests that I think you're really going to enjoy. So OJ Simpson died last week and there was a very strange response by the news media. It felt like everyone was doing that Norm MacDonald meme. Yeah, well, I think the real <laughs> terrible thing was the murder. It, everyone, of course, remembers OJ Simpson for the murder trial that was uh, hugely famous and kind of the aftermath of that. But it seemed like in all of the news headlines, the most important thing was the victimhood of OJ Simpson. He had been a victim of the system, and this trial revealed all this racial strife in the United States for the first time. Very laughable in a lot of ways, but re very tragically revealing in others. Wanted to bring on some of my favorite podcast podcast hosts to talk about that today. Merrick Bogbeef of the Good Old Ballet Podcast. Thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks. Hey, good one. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right, guys. So I don't know about you, but I was of uh, this age where this is one of the first like large public events to break through into my consciousness. I was in actually I was still in elementary school when this happened. And so it was one of those things where all the adults uh, suddenly wanted to rush and watch everything that was happening with it. The teachers at school wanted to like roll out the TV on the old tray, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the old uh, cart uh, that they had and turn it on so they could watch different aspects of the trial. But most of us didn't really understand what was going on. And so I want to dive into all of this, you know, uh, the kind of remembering the OJ trial, the impact that it had and why the news media responded the way it did. But before we get into all that, guys, let's hear about the importance of hiring base people through new founding. Hey guys, I need to talk to you about new founding. Look, we all know that the job market is a disaster right now. Based people can't find good companies to work for and good companies can't find employees to get the work done. And that's why you need access to the new founding network. New Founding has created a network of high excellence professionals who are seeking to join grounded American businesses. They're individuals, often in elite organizations, who are ready for a team and mission that supports their values instead of working against them. Aligned companies are already using the network to hire high trust, exceptional individuals who match the culture and mission of their team. You can apply for access to the New Founding Talent Network at newfounding.com slash talent. You'll be connected with candidates who will build your business. That's newfounding.com slash talent. Go there now to find your next hire. All right, guys. So I don't know about you. I'm known for kind of being cynical, especially when it comes to the news media. There's not a lot that really surprises me when they're particularly horrific. But I got to say, the OJ one did catch me a little bit by surprise. I mean, the man is, again, famous mostly at this point <laughs> for murdering a woman. And uh, you think that in today's political environment, that would matter, right? That, that, that That's the victimhood, that that would be kind of the big deal. However, every headline was kind of was about the racial aspect which I think says something about the way that our public consciousness, our, our public religion has shifted. Uh, we had people on uh, CNN saying that, well, you know, really black America just wanted to watch a rich black person get away with murder. Uh, you know, we, we had pundits uh, talking about how important it was for a black person to get away with killing their spouse we had uh, the AP talking about how really it was the, the murder trial that robbed oj simpson of the american dream were you guys surprised that this was the narrative that was imme immediately adopted by the media uh i'll the um i was not surprised uh that the media uh celebrated basically mourned mourned his death with with tears and jubilee uh, and sort of um well you know it, it, because he's the one that gave them all jobs uh i, I mean oj juice his uh, the i mean even if you're a zoomer your entire world is is i mean is basically created by uh juice and like uh, the closest thing we've had to this is george floyd in terms of um i mean the the trial had so many effects like uh i don't know if you guys like do you guys remember watching like being 
what news was like before the OJ trial. I mean, you you could tune into C-SPAN and like they would start off like on Monday with a letter to like a letter to the editor written in the Washington Post or whatever, which would be discussed all week. Yeah. And, and like uh so 24 hour news cycle juice reality tv juice uh sort of uh the thing about reality tv and this was reported on by by everybody was that uh so everyone's always kind of known that um uh reality is stranger than fiction and uh you know we have a lot of very talented people in places like you know hollywood and television stuff like that uh they're very expensive it costs a lot of money to pay them and um you don't have to you can just point a camera at at sort of crazy people at like dennis rodman or you know any, any of these these sort of uh random sort of alcoholic psychopaths athletes and stuff and uh you don't have to pay people it's a lot cheaper uh th this is why you know we got rid of bands like you, you ever see these old um uh, you ever see like dion and uh what was dion's back in band merrick uh dion yeah the the wanderers guy yeah 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 i don't remember i just oh, remember yeah. dion uh well, dion you ever see him like his backing bands like 40 guys right that's expensive yeah. you can replace all those guys with a dj well this reality tv was uh a version of that and so they, they got rid of all these wonderful they got rid of all these tv people and they replaced them with news people all these news people all these assholes sorry all these a-holes you see on tv like all this stuff started with juice i mean the, the, there was not none of this stuff really exist. you had a little you had like sally jesse and stuff like that but it was like um even them they didn't even really, really know what they were doing like uh Hal Geraldo rivera was like the guy that was like he was there before and he adapted i think he isn't he still going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Him and Phil Donahue uh, was the other. Yeah, with the, they were kind of like the two debate, or uh, they would kind of do the soap opera style news. You're right to say that this shifted everything. I, I didn't really immediately think about the way that this was connected to the the 24 hour news cycle, but mm -hmm. obviously this was the birth of of uh, kind of the news channel, the CNN and other other 24 hour news stations. Is, is just before this. And so this is really the event that actually gets people to watch that regularly. Of course, it also gives us the birth of the Kardashians uh, because the patriarch of that family is connected to this. And so in, in a lot of ways, this shifts the, the news industry, this shifts the entertainment industry. And uh, it really had an incredible level of cultural penetration. Like I said, I was too young to remember OJ Simpson really as a star athlete and maybe just a little bit uh, you know, appearing in a few movies, uh, but all of a sudden he was everywhere. Like I said, the, the, I remember being at a birthday party at my friend's house when I was in elementary school and all the adults made us stop whatever we were doing so they could watch the Bronco chase on the TV. Uh, every time there was a development in the courtroom, you know, it was like school stopped. It was this nationwide event in, in a way that we just rarely see these things anymore. I don't know if you guys remember uh, Pogs. I don't know if you're... Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. little, the pog game where you had to like slam these bottle caps with the with, with a slammer and everything and the pog some of the pogs had like don't squeeze the juice on them with like okay's <laughs> number like that's the level that it got to like a kid's toy which otherwise would not be connected to you know anything like this was had that had like jokes from that printed on it that it was a level of kind of ubiquity that this trial had throughout pop culture well yeah. the, the gulf war kind of burst I guess 24 hour cable news, but I think the OJ trial was the first time they realized not just that you could, you know, you can run that crap 24 seven and people will watch it, but how many people will watch it. For example, the Bronco chase was watched by more people that year than the Super Bowl. I remember, I remember that distinctly when I was a kid, kind of, I, mean, I, I didn't care about the news, but I saw, you know, I, I looked over the television and they're watching this, this halfback being chased through Southern California. It, more importantly, how many people watch the trial every day for like half a year? This wasn't just like some like Sally Jesse Raphael, whatever. That was kind of stuff for Board Housewives. Like a lot of people watched the OJ trial and followed it. It it, it, it certainly created the true you know the true crime 
genre of you know think about if you think, add up like Nancy Grace people like that the serial podcast even today I think one of the like the top three podcasts are, are true crime right like it, it, it's it, if it's not the top three they it's loaded with them yeah people love this stuff I and mean, they no one realized that people would watch this crap before OJ Simpson juice is there's a lot of things about him that that that's like um you have to remember. I have to remind myself because uh, all of us were too young, really, like to uh, like one like one thing is like even I don't know how big the NFL is is, is uh, it's always been like the I don't know how long, it, it, the NFL is uh, you could say it's the biggest sport, but um uh, I don't like these days uh, running backs are basically disposable people, right? They like mm-hmm. uh, there's no I don't, I don't know I don't think running backs win MVPs and stuff anymore, you know uh they have all this west coast offense now the quarterback is is the, kind of the guy uh but that wasn't the case back in the old back in the old days uh the running like running backs were huge and oj was basically he was the best he rushed for 2000 yards which is completely insane you think about all the well, I mean, so that's a, that's a huge deal. I'm not trying to blow up juice and say that, uh, oh, this is a great guy. I'm trying to like, why, why, like, why, what were the, the things that sort of snowballed? So you had him as like this California guy, you know, he was from San Francisco and then he plays at USC and he's the best running back like ever his career, like he starts in the pros in 68. And so like, uh, whatever, anything you do in America, uh, if you do it, if you did it from 1968 to 1972, it's magnified times a hundred. I don't know why, but like, if you had a big hit or something, uh, and it happened from 68 to 72, uh, I guess this is when everyone got back from the Vietnam war, whatever. That is, is why like, we're stuck with the Eagles forever. Is that the, <laughs> yes. Um, and so, you know, he, and he he's there. Uh, by the way, there's a funny thing about this. So, and and he he immediately gets going in Hollywood, and it's weird because like you don't really think of him as like a big star, but I mean he was always doing stuff. Uh, you know, he was supposed to be the Terminator. They were gonna he was they were gonna make him the Terminator Terminator One, but uh, uh, Cameron said nobody will believe this guy is a killer. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's such a nice guy um and so you got that stuff going but i mean i, I think that like some of the real important things about this is uh you know america was kind of stuffy and i always think about this with rome and stuff like that people understand rome the wrong way like you know they'll say like um oh people in rome were like wild sex perverts and stuff and like when you read the Romans, like uh, you don't get that at all. You get the exact opposite. Like they will accuse people. They'll say like uh, they will like ac- they will like use this as a slur. They'll say uh, you're a sex pervert or whatever. Uh, be- some people are dumb. They'll take that the wrong way. No, they're saying like um, uh, they have like a, a a cultural thing about this. America was pretty damn stuffy at like anything from like our upper middle class and up were. I mean, I'm not saying like they, they we we were uh, I don't know if you say snotty, stuffy, or uh, uh, I mean we were pr- a pretty reserved people. You, look at watch watch someone like Tom Brokaw on TV or something, and just look at his mannerisms. And America thought this is the most relatable person. And this is a very, you know, the, the but that's not what Americans were. But when people saw the OJ trial, uh, all these people, like I think everyone sat around and said. You know, America's changed a lot, and these people. You know, this is where you got. If you watch watching the OJ trial, watching these programs like um, Howard Stern, and uh, uh, someone brought it up in the comments. Who was the guy? In the Ch- Chicago. I think he was the mayor of Chicago or something at some point. No, he was the mayor of another town, but um, uh, Springer, um, Springer and stuff. <laughs> America was changing, and people were ready to tolerate stuff that that. You know, back in the old days, like, uh, uh, if there was, you know, Zizek talks about that, if, like, if there was underwear in a scene, they would have, they would replace the underwear with just like, with like a, a cloth that, that, that just looks like random cloth because uh, Americans would be, would be like, what are they they're showing underwear on the screen? That's ridiculous. And, and that's only a short amount of time later. I think this is where, this is where TV, 
lots of people just sat around and said, well, you know, maybe your America's ready for uh, something a bit more. Like th- this, co- the country had had actually changed, and <laughs> this is where th- America got a lot sleazier, is what you're saying. Yeah, and like it, it's we were basically, I think people in Hollywood and stuff like that, they realized we could tolerate a lot more, and this is where mm. you saw. Uh, Oh, well, you, well, you saw what people like the Kardashians were doing on TV and stuff, that kind of stuff. Um, like, you know, who we all know that, you know, all kinds of wild stuff was going on in Hollywood, but they were very careful and uh, about what they presented to us. You know, they, they thought, oh, these Americans will ride if they, you know, they see a pair of underwear on the TV and they realize nah, these Americans, they'll, they'll suck up the, the, the trashiest stuff there is. They love it. Well, yeah. I, I- I don't think that it was like a conscious decision. They like, okay, well, I guess we can push the boundaries further. I, here's what I think happened. First of all, you, the people who prevent, like, you know, the people who were complaining about the underwear or, you know, what loose, how Lucille Ball should not have a, a, a two person bed and on the camera. That was a very dedicated minority of people who would write letters and exert social pressure on the, the TV networks and people who were show creators like you know the guy in my pfp here rod serling complained about this endlessly if he uh, pissed off you know the precursors to the evangelicals they would write the studio and scare them and, and the make bring him to heel now we have a lot of familiarity with that today and the shoes on the other foot now unfortunately and b it, you have it's just like a mechanical thing where uh, there when there were three networks there was a limit to how much stuff could be on. There was a limit to how much content you could blast out in the people's brains. Cable completely eradicated that. There was no limit, which meant that there, just like any, like if you, if you're a sport, like you're talking about sports, you're a sports fan, whenever there's expansions, whenever there's new talent pools, there's this dilution that is inescapable. And that that's what happened in the nineties with cable TV. It dil- it diluted the entire media landscape. And, yeah, they realized, hey, we can get away with a lot of stuff now. And they're, they're, those people who were writing letters in the 50s and the 60s, they're not around anymore. They don't care. We can get away with this. Nobody's going to stop us. It's dirt cheap to produce. And, you know, here we are today. So, you, social media, reality TV, that's what you get. What You get what you pay for. Real quick, though, I do want to stick on this. Like, I, I do want to stick by this point real quick that, of the, like, uh, look at look, look at everyone has seen and remarked upon a little bit. It's it's one of those things like um uh there used to like uh, you ever, uh like these little scenes that you see that sort of your brain is like you know something's there but you're not sure like uh there's like the uh like you know in the nineties so ever you see pictures in Africa there would be flies on people's face and like that really bothered people but no one really talked about it. it's kind of a hard thing to get into well the american thing like a, a, a particular scene for america was like uh looking at the yankees games and every single person there is wearing like this 12 piece suit even if you know they ain't got two nickels to rub together mm-hmm. or once again watching any, like all these discussions on tv or or you know people like tom brokaw or something we were a, a pretty damn like we were a very i mean uh you 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 want to present yourself as as this uh stuffy person you know what i'm saying that we were just that was just kind of what we were we were like yeah we, and, we had some standards i suppose <laughs> yeah and, and i do agree that that there that i don't think i mean to me the 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 the, the, the way this worked was just it was i don't think it was playing it was just hey this, this feels fine and hey, we did this it was crazy but uh, it worked out. For, it was fine. Let's give them a little more. And, yeah. and, and the thing, it was so much cheaper. This all these all these TV stations were racking up record profits. Uh, people were tuning in nonstop, and it was the cheapest thing in the world for the TV station to produce. Yeah, it really does create this shift in what a media personality is. You know, there used to be a pretty hard line between somebody who. Uh, was an actor, someone who, you know, did prepared content and was performing on camera and a news person who was somebody who was supposed to be, you know, cultivating trust and delivering very important information. And obviously, like you said, that this wasn't the only thing that launched cable news, but it was the first thing that allowed a lot of these 
personalities to emerge. It, suddenly, news commentator became something that uh, was was more more about entertainment and more you know you you were not just delivering facts. It was your job to hold people's attention and uh, you know suss out different aspects that were salacious of the trial. What were people wearing? What's the background of everybody? You, you start to get the the emergence of personalities that are built up and, and influence their culture. All the seeds of that kind of enter into the to, to I think the the public consciousness at this time. But of course, along with the fact that this trial really changed the way that uh, a lot of news media portrayed events, it also I think harkens back to to kind of the uh, a cycle. You know, we look at the riots of. 2020, we look at the deification of someone like George Floyd, and it's easy to forget that this is actually not very new, that this is something that uh, has has happened multiple times in the past. Maybe maybe George Floyd's uh, being sainted is it feels different because of kind of uh, how unknown and how like obviously degenerate this guy was as where Simpson was seen as this clean cut guy in a lot of ways. He was accomplished he was an actor he was a a, a record setting uh legendary athlete so the fact that he was kind of given this amount of attention uh made a little more sense to people so this so the this and that happening to someone like george floyd or uh you know trayvon martin seems more extreme in some ways but in others this is a continuation of a very long process. I have to remember that this trial is taking place just a few years after the LA riots and the, and kind of the buzz around this uh, trial the whole time is, is this going to create another riot situation? If, if, if OJ is found guilty, if, if the entire United States, if all of black America was watching this trial and this man is, is found guilty, whether he's actually guilty or not is immaterial. The real question is, Will this create civil unrest because it's such a highly publicized trial? Yes. And, you know, there's there's so many ways that the, this trial is super important in a lot of ways. So I know there's some people listening that are shouting at their screen saying, why, why aren't you discussing this other? And, you know, just to touch on a couple of them, uh, racial politics, massive here. And there's there's so, so many things to talk about, you know, with that. And, uh, L.A., you know, L.A. in like the 50s is a cow town. You know, by by the time of the L.A. riots, it is, uh, you, you know, well, you know, it was sort of halfway in between. Uh, it's a cow town and the L.A. riots. L.A. is the coolest place in the world. This is where, you know, this is where like the electric guitars and hot rods and all this kind of stuff came out. L.A. was is was is the most American city. It's the most American city because it's not really a city. It's like just this. It's like, uh, uh, you know, you don't live downtown L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, you live in Pasadena with it, with a with a, a house in a backyard. You drive a, a you drive a a car and stuff. No, it's not the most American city. It's the most twentieth century city. But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you, like you're not gonna have. There's no L A in France. You know what I mean? Right. L A is like like uh, Orlando and stuff. But and so, but it, and you look at, look at L A. So uh, you have you have the riots, and you have uh, and the riots have, which is the, what, what we're. I mean, so it's coming out like so there's been interviews now that like uh, there's a lot of stuff about this, about this stuff that like white people didn't understand. And one of the things we found out is that uh, black people really didn't like OJ that much. They saw him as bait like he was kind of a sellout, uh, which I mean, in a way of like, you know, it's not like it's not like he it's not like he he uh, he was I mean, he was never really a, a hood guy. You know, what I mean, like he was a. He was but, quite the opposite. Yes. Right. And so, uh, you know, it was like an Obama figure. Right. Clean cut, articulate, et cetera. Right. And, but, you know, like what, what, uh, the, the, the basically to make a long story short, uh, that, that is like, so like, so is, uh, you know, Kobe doesn't really, Kobe like grew up in, overseas and stuff. Uh, what, what really they don't like about uh uh oj is the interracial uh marriage which um is more controversial in that community than you might know 
But uh, they just said they didn't really care. This they wanted to be payback for these LA riots and stuff. But uh, you, I, I would just take here's a snapshot from the LA riots that I think is important to look at. So you have someone like who's that history podcaster? Uh, Dan Carlin. <laughs> Yeah. Dan, Dan Carlin, Carlin was like a uh, a reporter for the LA Times during the riots, and he was like walking the streets while this was happening. Now, if you ask Dan Carlin, I have heard Dan Carlin say that he honestly believed, so he would man the phones. Like they have like a phone, people call in and say, here's the news or whatever. Uh, can you come look at this news? He said that, that while he was working there, like there would be all these phone calls all the time. And like, he believed that, uh, the LAPD, which you could have, we could talk about LAPD for four hours. LAPD is a force in and of itself. I mean, it's a huge deal. Like they, they're very innovative. They did their own. It's not just like another police force, but anyways, uh, that LA, that like, Hey, there'll be some some black mother like, well, the LAP just PD came by and they beat the ass out of my black son for no reason, blah, blah, blah. And he claimed he believed this stuff. Well, uh, LA riots happens, and what someone like Dan Carlin did, and not just picking him out for no reason, because Dan Carlin represented an entire movement. Uh, what Dan Carlin did is all these there was a lot of white people in LA that after the riots happened, they created Boulder, Colorado. They created uh Seattle. I mean, the Seattle existed, but it didn't exist like uh, before. All these people just left. They were scared of LA at this point. You had stuff like Reginald Denny getting killed and stuff. Uh he didn't get killed, but yeah. Well, he didn't? No, I'm pretty sure Reginald Denny yeah, Reginald Denny survived. Okay, gotcha. But, but he got he got the tar beat out of him, yeah. Right. So this is where, you know, you had all these like uh, nice liberal white people saying like, yeah, the police here are corrupt. They just beat the ass out of uh, black people randomly. Uh, but I'm also I'm leaving because I'm scared of black people in, in, in L.A. I, I'll, I'll say this about the trial. I, from my perspective, grow, I mean, I, I lived in the same place I live now, rural Virginia. And the common view that people had was that he would be found guilty because the like there was so much evidence against him that it would be basically impossible for anybody not to convict him. And then what would happen would be, there would be another LA riot that that was going to happen. That's what everybody here believed was going to occur. And, and there was open speculation in the media about whether or not, because like if, if you, if, if for the zoomers out there, the LA riots, I mean, the inciting incident supposedly was, the not guilty verdict of the cops who beat the crap out of uh, Rodney King. And that, they, that set off a, how was it? was a three, four day riot that ended up having the national guard show up. It's so like everybody said, yeah, this is going to happen again. We, this happened two years ago, whatever. We're going to see a repeat of this. Like th this wasn't even a question. Like, yeah, they're definitely going to riot when he's convicted. Yeah, it's one of those things, like I said, you you hear commentators today talk about the importance of the racial reckoning of, of 2020 and how, you know, this is a, a sea change in the way that, you know, race relations <laughs> and all these happen. And it, it, you kind of realize, like, actually, all you need to do is have a memory, like every 20 to 30 years, it seems like actually this, this just came, comes and cycles back in again. Mm -hmm. and, and and you can have all the reckonings you want, but it, seem, it doesn't seem to change the underlying dynamic there and it really is amazing like you said uh, aj simpson was not really accepted by a lot of the black community there's a lot of tension uh famously uh johnny cochran his lawyer you know the, one of the many amazing personalities that exploded out of this uh, kind of soap opera drama in the courtroom uh famously went in and changed redecorated oj simpson's house <laughs> so that when the jurors show up they didn't find a bunch of pictures of him uh you know hanging out with donald trump and yeah it's, it's it was a lot, a lot of pictures of him uh with not a lot of black people and they a naked, but a naked picture of paula was it paula barbieri his his girlfriend there's a giant naked portrait of her that they replaced with a i believe they took a in oh shoot norman rockwell painting yes, replaced, yeah. replaced yeah yeah, yeah, I think it was one that became one that was supposed to be like a symbol of uh, the end of segregation, public schools or something like that. And so, yeah, they, they completely redid his house to make him look 
uh, you know, more, more black to, to, to be to be more part of a community. And so there really was this you know effort of the the prosecution to play into this dynamic for a guy who really didn't fit into that struggle or that that identity or that community really had gone out of his way to kind of distance him, himself as much as possible from that dynamic. But once they realized that this was going to have a significant weight on the jury and that that the fact that a riot could come and this kind of thing uh, was was probably going to change the way that the jury understood uh, the decision they were going to make. They played very heavily into this. And so, uh, again, just all of these things that we think of as uh, modern inventions of uh, kind of the current racial tensions or uh, the, the things that we're told of that, that were coming to a head because of uh, kind of kind of all the dynamics in, in 2020, these kind of things actually are very old and actually are things that uh, don't seem to go away no matter mm -hmm. how much is, uh, you know, done or how many inroads are made and how many, you know, how many deals are cut and how much rec how many reckonings we have. Uh, they, they just seem to be dynamics that are recurring over and over again. Right. And so I think, it, like I said, it was just very funny to watch a lot of people be shocked that this guy who who very obviously, you know, murdered a woman uh is is really treated with kid gloves and the most important thing for the media and many others is uh that you know his trial shows the tensions between those things and and the thing that everybody really wanted in the media was was to to watch this guy walk uh that was far more important than anything when it comes to actually holding someone accountable for violence against women which is supposed to be something that we care about the only thing that really changes about this is power's reaction to it and how far they're willing to take it. You know, in the sixties you have a race riot and, you know, 20 people get shot by the national guard and you know, the, <laughs> the L word media says, Oh, this is tragic. You know, this didn't ever happen, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is ultimately, this is, this is the fault of the you know, white establishment, but they don't say it in those terms that they, they, they frame it. <sighs> a lot more gently because regular people just simply are not prepared in 1960 to accept that your city just gets burnt down every, every generation because you know, the, the Democrat party politics when the nineties roll around, it was funny because there was this push and pull. There were people who were angry at Bush and, and uh, was it Gates who was the, the police chief for, for initially for not stopping the riots and not, using the police and national guard effectively to which like really what you're saying is you didn't bring in the national guards to crack heads and shoot people fast enough. But then afterwards they said, well, actually this all happened because the LAPD is evil and racist. Uh, we just, every generation, the rhetoric, they, they, they get closer to like their true feelings about the rhetoric. And like now in our generation, we've seen it come, like with George Floyd and, and everything that's happened. Now uh, police officers will be put on will be put on trial and face life in prison for you know doing what police officers are supposed to do. I, I guess I, I want to say well we're we're kind of approaching the point where what they think and what they say are kind of the same, but that's probably not true. We probably have not even plumbed the depths of this yet. Like it, it, twenty years from now, I, it. it there is there are foreign examples, but I won't bring them up, but it could always get a lot worse. Yeah, it does feel like there's a, you know, the, there was a revolution started much earlier where a, a much more competent set of elites had to start this uh, kind of long march through the criminal justice institutions. And like you said, start conditioning people to the idea that this just happens to your city. And they had to use very different rhetoric and justifications and they could only allow so much of it and over time uh you know this has become something that people <laughs> have been conditioned to just accept this is just part of life this is what happens in fact not only does it happen you probably deserve it uh you know and, and every iteration of this gets a little more blatant you know in in the kind of the la riots you have the rooftop koreans and the rooftop koreans become a meme because they're allowed to protect themselves right like there's a there's a dynamic there where um, they're, they're still allowed to see themselves as a community that, that doesn't just get run over in this situation. And this kind of leads us to then like the Kyle Rittenhouses uh, of, of kind of the 2020 uh, movement and, and uh, with, with the two, uh, the, two uh, the couple in Atlanta, I'm trying to remember their name off the top of my head. 
but but these kind of become the new you know new icons now it's it's basically illegal for them to protect themselves the the the, the next iteration of the rooftop koreans are are basically completely illegal and now we're to the point where you know we're we're watching these uh you know pro palestinian uh <laughs> pro, uh, uh, uh protests kind of hold up traffic to airports and everything and just no one feels like they can do anything like there's there's the, everyone has given up. The police officers know they're only there to protect the lawbreakers and everyone else knows that's why they're there. They're not there to stop any crime. They're only there to stop the people who would stop crime. Uh, and this is just considered kind of part of life. This is the way that we we kind of view our interactions with the regime, with law enforcement, uh, with kind of uh, foot soldiers of political leftist political power now. Uh, the, the only the only reason to even pay the 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 uh, you know the salaries of police officers at this point is so that they can stop you in case you see a crime and would like to keep it from occurring. Okay, I want to read a uh, quote here, um, which was I mean this was on the tip of everyone's tongue in 1995, which uh, is uh, well it's something people are thinking about a lot now. So this is from uh, Michael Lind, a professor at the University of Texas at Austin. Mm. Um, on the history of trial by jury in the United States, he, uh, he wrote from independence until the civil rights revolution, the jury was a means by which white bigots legally lynched Indians, blacks, and Asians, or acquitted their white murders. Today, black urban black juries all too often put race above justice in the same manner. Uh, well, so we've seen this, I'm. And I mean, this is uh, now they don't even we don't even get to the now we don't even get to the jury. I mean, we've gotten to this point uh, where, you know, they, they fixed it at the uh, the level of the. Um, uh, the, the uh, of just making uh, putting you on trial to begin with. Uh, but like uh, just you tried almost everything about where we're at today is wrapped up somewhere in the oj trial like, there's a couple things that's not there like um but uh here's here's one that uh, you didn't see coming uh was first off oj is from san francisco san francisco is like san francisco became like you, you know it was the new superpower in america which like brought us this entire new uh, massive industry and and uh just a power center that are you know just looking at politics how many of our of our leading politicians are birthed out of there or uh their primary donors are sponsored out of there well, it wasn't always that way like you know lbj uh, which was like you know the 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 super the the big super liberal mega force from from the before time you know uh he was like his primary donors were from like Houston Texas I'm talking about like it was like uh, Brown and Root or something instead of like mm -hmm. you, know, you know some thing but uh, check this out uh, OJ's dad was transgender sorry what OJ's dad was transgender it's all there OJ Simpson's father was a transsexual uh well he was he was he was doing some he was into cross dressing right well, you're thinking about, had, about bruce jenner or no i'm talking about okay. i'm talking about oj I, right. uh, now they they look they had different words back then i don't want to violate the civil rights act but wow um, okay yeah i just looked this up uh oh you can say this he was a well-known drag queen in the bay area sure wow okay hey, deep lore there him. did not know I very, did not know that very progressive. It's all there, man. It's the only, but I was going to say, the only thing that's not really there, especially in the context of California, and especially in the context of black people in California, is Hispanics. Because, I mean, as powerful as black as blacks were becoming in, in California politics, you have people like, uh, who's that moron, that old old black lady uh, congresswoman in in oh, LA. Uh, Maxine Waters? Yeah, Maxine, yeah. <laughs> Maxine Waters, yeah. That mummy, yeah. Yeah, I mean she's she's done. I mean, you look at look at her her where she's um her district or whatever. I mean, I'm sure she'll last for a while longer because she's got like an organized um, group, or whatever, but um uh they're gone. They're, they'll be all being replaced by Hispanics. Uh black people, black people's political power in in, in California is gonna be done in no time, and it's gonna get uh hispanics are kicking their ass out i want to step back for a second with you the michael Lynn quote which 
uh, uh, by by the way, GOB guest Michael Land. Got to disagree with him a little bit. He's he's right on the basic point, but the the real point here is that the concept of a, a jury trial, a trial by a jury, your peers, they have to be your peers. They have to be people that you share that you share a common, if not ancestry, then a common culture with. You have to you have to feel that you are all the same kind of thing. You're all the same people. You're in this together because if you if you don't, what you what you really have is like it's the equivalent of a military tribunal. So when you're going on, when you're being tried by people who not only don't like empathize with you, your existence as a human being, but maybe don't like you, that's not really a trial anymore. Yeah, and, but, yeah, but I mean, even still, though, like let's say you do have trial by jury, but you're in a multicultural situation. Like, right. Like it does. Like, what's it matter? Like, um. You know, uh, what, like, what, what if, what if the major league baseball, like when, when they, when they were, uh, you know, there's, there's been these recent scandals with the, the, the pitchers fixing the, uh, the, the, the ball, you know, they're, they're putting the, the uh, right. slick stuff on the ball. What if the only people that, that sort of, that, that, that adjudicate that was like, uh, if you were Yankees picture was fellow Yankees, right? The other Yankees say, well, right. he, well, well, he's, well, well, he didn't do anything. You know, th there's a certain kind of like, um, uh, if you go like the, there's a reason that every multi-ethnic empire basically had their judi judicial systems start inside the tribes right so if the romans didn't go you didn't go directly on trial with you know the roman governor you started inside you know jesus starts inside uh you know the the, the local governance first before the, they take you to pontius pilate so the, the, this is a long-standing uh you know thing that that people have understood throughout history they they always had you know the community try them first before I went to a, like a larger imperial official governance. Yeah, if you don't care that there's more, like this, you know, this is the whole thing about you know the the ghetto like uh, uh, drug dealers in the ghetto or or or, or or murderers and stuff like that. If they don't care that that there's murders running around their neighborhood, I mean, we can try to do something. <clears throat> but you're not really going to have a society where it matters. I mean, you know, you, you could take a look at this. Um, uh, the Klan would uh, lynch white people that, that that were doing things that like they just would like criminal stuff or, or stuff like that. Uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, uh, e even in the midst of this sort of this sort of thing. Um, or you'll see this, you'll see this in, in prison gangs and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but we, like we could expect that out of prison gangs, but not out of the basic American people. And it's because a lot, you know, the media is not, the media is not free from, from, uh, from, uh, blame here. I mean, a lot of this is because people feel so the media just keeps feeding people being put upon, being put upon. You know, you see this stuff. I was watching this stuff today. They're talking about, uh, oh, you know, Beyonce is going to do country music. And they're just feel one of like, oh, you know, how are these white people going to take it? Blah, blah, blah. It, it made me think of uh, a Charlie Pride sold a lot of records, to white people wearing a, a, a cowboy hat. Uh, and it was fine. Or you go look at Marvel's like, oh, how are you going to like this? Um, this uh, 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 Black Panther movie? White people, huh? How are you going to deal with that? Well, well, you know, we you had inclusion, you had Blade, but you don't want to be included. You you want to be pissed off. You want to be angry at everybody. I, I and, remember Darius Rucker. It seems fine. It's gonna be <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean, it all every like that is the ultimate thing. I mean, that this is what you see in gender politics, racial politics. <clears throat> everybody wants to be angry. It's angry. Everybody wants to be pissed off. Uh, uh, at, at, at the man stole something from me, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, America owes way too many people too much. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's a huge problem. We got to stop telling people, uh, uh, all this crap about how much they, they're, they're owed by America. Yeah. I mean, good luck with that. I mean, I agree with you, but yeah, there's no politician that's, you know, the, the this is the you know you are the patronage guy right you you explain this for a living i just so. want to say for the yeah. record and it comes it's important because when we when you talk about the breakdown of jury trials like this is obviously we're going to head you know the, the term lynching it comes from it comes from virginia during the war of independence where some some fellas named lynch set up some little drumhead tribunals for loyalists 
and they didn't really follow the, the letter of English law when they were dealing with them. And that was where the term came in. It, it, they weren't they weren't hanging brothers from trees in like you know 1780. It, it was it was purely like deal, uh, dealing with political matters between people loyal to the crown and people who were are patriotic. That that's yep. what it comes from. And yeah, the, the vast majority of people in American history who were lynched were were white people because you, you, when you're lynched, if you're out in, if you're out west, where there's you know there's a marshal, there's a sheriff, maybe a hundred miles away, you you deal you dealt with these things yourself. Yeah, Lynch is a great uh, name, by the way. That's like a good action movie name. You know, <laughs> J- Jake Lynch. Uh, by, um, along the same lines, do uh, you know who invented the toilet? <laughs> no, I don't. Thomas Crapper. Uh, uh, okay, I've heard that before. Is that actually true? Yeah. I've always preferred the uh, you know the Robin Hood men in tights uh, naming convention. I always assumed that that was the, the way that actually came about, but yeah a lot of like i said it we i guess we could kind of kind of uh go on this forever but the the main thing i wanted to capture was just the the absurdity of pretending like any of this stuff is right we were we we are it's easy i think even for a lot of conservatives a lot of right-wingers to be pulled into this narrative that uh, all these tensions are are bursting forth because of you know postmodern neo Marxists or you know whatever we're, we're oh, doing, God, you know, yeah. uh, whatever we're selling you know if if it was if it just wasn't for the Frankfurt School you know none none of this would be happening right now uh, but uh, these these tensions are old and tragically uh, this pattern is recurring uh, and the OJ trial is just one of many examples where we have seen this pattern the events of 2020 are not you new they're not unique uh they're actually just part of a long running dynamic inside the united states uh and they're not things that get solved because we like get more base institutions or you know have uh you know get get rid of uh the teaching of marx in every university uh and and the fact that the news media can amplify and highlight this and play you know and, and make you know oj simpson into a victim all these years later even with all these dynamics that we, we've kind of seen play themselves out I, I think just should tell people something about uh the role that unfortunately race relations in the media have played in the public discourse and the way that it primes people to accept outright violence uh from people yeah uh, it, it's a very dangerous thing and i think sitting around and pretending that it's all just Marxism. Um, you know, it's not like, it's not that the left isn't Marxist. They are in, in many ways, but, but pretending that's the, the factor. And if we can just roll back, you know, the, the, the works of Derrida or something that, then that we fix this problem, I, I think is deluding ourselves into addressing things that are far more controversial and far more difficult to, to fix. There was a guy on the jury who was involved with the black Panthers, whatever in the sixties. And he gave like a black power salute at some point during the during the reading of the verdict or after or whatever and one of the other jurors a nice old she's now now a nice old black lady just said yeah we we knew he did it but it was revenge blah blah these people they weren't like uh deep scholars of Karl marx or whatever they were people who were wrapped up in ethno narcissism and they did they enacted what they felt was revenge against people who owed them something um, as for how you prevent this, like, there are things that, like, obviously, uh, not having Marsha Clark be the prosecutor, uh, he would probably, OJ Potenza would probably have been in, uh, would have died in jail. Uh, the, the DA not moving the trial from Santa Monica to LA, where instead of being literally tried by a jury of his peers, like rich people in, in, uh, in Beverly Hills, he was tried by people in LA, in LA, LA County. So, yeah. Maybe stuff like that you could have you could have avoided all this. Now I know, like in the grand scheme of things, uh, I, nobody really cares. This lady got her head almost cut off by her ex husband. Not not the biggest news. N- normally, not the biggest news story in the world. But like, if if anybody in the L.A. Uh, the prosecutor's office ha- had even the slightest conception of of human nature, uh, this we pro- this would not be a story. This would have been a guy who died in jail. For, for murdering his wife after you know, 
cooling his heels for 40 years. Uh it's a great point. So the thing about ethno narcissism and and the thing about his peers, uh, you know, the, the thing about the peers, it's kind of like uh, this is something libs will accuse us of rightly with respect to Trump. And this was also said about uh, Andrew Jackson. Like um, they'll say, like uh, you know, uh, the, these these MAGA chuds, they don't care how like brutish and and, and thuggish that that this guy uh, Trump is because they just feel like. Um, well, they're just inflicting him upon us in in Washington D.C. You know, like they don't live there. Yeah. This is, you're you don't you're not part of the government. You don't understand all of the trouble this guy brings. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it is it's kind of true. And then by the yeah. same token, <clears throat> OJ doesn't live in the hood. He kind of never lived in the hood. And they're like, yeah, well, f those rich white people, uh, because like what I'm getting at is that. Uh, and this is something that, you know, has to like, uh, you know, you almost have to remind yourself, like, you know, if you have like people in, in like, it, you know, even in primitive societies, like if you have any sense at all, uh, you don't want, regardless of who's of who, uh, of how, of, you know, their family and all this crap and, and, and are, are they the same race as you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, people that do stuff like, uh, uh, you know, driving around the house of your ex-wife and cutting her head off. Uh, you you have to do something. You know those those people they're not really fit to to walk around in regular society. Uh, they're messed up. That you know they got something wrong with them. By the way, you know he was put upon. Uh, what was you know the situation he was in wasn't a good situation. You don't feel good about that situation. Uh, if he had you know if he had saw Ron Goldman or whatever the hell you know you know uh at at, at the coffee shop and they had words and um. You know, and he punched him there, and he died or something. Uh, I could basically understand that, yeah. but but the, what he did was that's like, oh well, sorry, bro. Uh, we don't you you don't really have the impulse control to you know be in be in regular society. You can't really do that. That that, that that's uh that's kind of too far. You know, we just we don't. If if you let people do that, you don't have a society. You you just you can't do stuff like that, uh, which uh, should be obvious. But uh, you know, it, it's this whole whole feeling put upon. By the way, real quick, uh, I wonder how you felt about this. Um, I felt like everybody in the right wing was um, uh, behind Rufo in this latest conversation between Rufo and um and uh curtis yarvin and yarvin and um i don't know man i felt like uh they're 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 they're, they're much too quickly dismissing yarvin's points about this stuff yeah i'm, I'm gonna do a, a deep dive on this on friday so i don't want to spoil it Excellent. Play, play too much my hand here but uh i think that uh that constitutionally uh i'm behind rufo like just just uh and i don't mean by the document constitution i mean just like his his attitude his uh his approach the his fighting spirit they're all things that like i want to be a part of and i think those are all very positive things that rufo brings to the table and yarvin was far too glib uh and dismissive and, <laughs> and ugly in the whole thing but i think uh the core of yarvin's um some of some of the core of yarvin's uh critique was very valid and i don't think that uh rufo sufficiently addressed it um, and I don't I, think he can, um, not because he's, you know, intellectually incapable or anything, but simply doing so would mean giving up, um, a, a, a piece of, of moral ground that he wants to stand on. So there's something I like about Rufo, which is this, this th aspect where you're just like, well, I just gotta, I gotta do the, I gotta uh, be in this conflict. I gotta fight. I gotta have these, you know, these one battle at a time. I'm, I'm keeping my eyes straight, straight ahead. I'm not thinking about the big picture. And I know people complain about we don't think enough about the big picture but i don't think that's really true i think that if you go on twitter you see a lot of people who are who are idea guys and they are thinking all the time about the grand scale of the universe and yarvin yarvin is one of them uh for good reason if you read you are it, a lot of it stuff's in there is brilliant the inherent problem is is that he tries to attribute things to like some essential quality of americans or certain religions or whatever, when really it's grappling with human nature. And I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure that Mr. Yarvin believes in human nature the same way we do, which is like, this is just kind of a fundamental conflict you, you have between worldviews. And that is like, that's his, that's his blind spot. 
and that's why you know the the glib stuff. Well, he just doesn't see the 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 world the same way that we do. If that yeah, Yarvin's fatal flaw is that he thinks he's a systems analyst and he thinks that he can just switch out the software and the hardware doesn't matter. Uh, so he he's like, okay, well, it's running on this system, and if I put it on a different system, uh, then it'll just work better, and that solves the problem. Uh, that that's the thing he gets wrong in that essay. Uh, but uh, Rufo has an equally dangerous problem mm -hmm. in that he's not willing to uh, admit uh, serious changes and serious uh, and and fatal flaws uh, that probably were present, um, and uh, and just pretending like they're not there and trying to incorporate them into or scale them into a global empire uh, is also due. Yeah, not everybody can be Douglas MacArthur. You gotta have some. You gotta have some people under him. People who are good at winning battles and 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 you know, grinding it out. You know that's. Yeah, but uh, you know, there's a lot of people that work themselves to death in crappy jobs because uh, you got to work smart. Uh, it's not just just hard work. I don't know. I I think that Yar like Yarvin's. Um, uh, I, I I do think that he made some great points. And I'll be looking forward to that. And I I. Um, you know, he's being an ass, but, you know, the, the position he's taking there is a perfect position to be an a-hole. This is something that we've seen. Um, uh, it's sort of the jester, or if you're an American and you've ever watched a presidential debate, you know, there's someone standing on that stage that knows that they can't win. And so they're allowed to bring up all the dirty laundry <laughs> and say all yep. the dirty stuff that no one's allowed to say. And people are going to say, oh, God, did he really go there? uh oh my gosh but and that's what yarvin's getting to do and so uh yeah but um by the He's way it. yeah uh by the way i don't know if we have time for this but um uh another thing that your show is uh, uh done a great job on you may maybe we need to revisit this as well you know you had a you had a a, a podcast about uh you you came out against the uh, uh cannibalism <laughs> it's a bold position to be sure <laughs> yeah and you know we discussed this last time we we're on the show uh there was uh some cannibalism going on in america <laughs> well did you see the this latest cannibalism story i can't say that i did no I did. what yeah. oh it was wonderful this is the most perfect american story um an amtrak train in southern california so you, you, it's, it's just got everything an amtrak train in southern california struck and killed a pedestrian last week severing their leg from their body via the force of the impact. This was in Bakersfield, you know, just a thousand degrees. It's just everything is just sun baked and roasted. And, uh, uh, you know, nobody's got any money. Everyone's angry in Bakersfield. Okay. So a train is going down the tracks in Bakersfield, California, um, just left the Amtrak station. Uh, there's a hobo on the train, <laughs> you know, sleeping on the tracks. The train goes by, just zips his leg right off. As it happened, there were people there, and you know, there's 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 CCTVs and stuff like that. So as soon as it happened, hobos scurried over to the leg and started eating it. Like like uh, waste like, not one night. <laughs> I, I I've been waiting for this for so long. Like uh, you know. <laughs> I, I hope that we'll get another chance with, uh, if there, if we give, hopefully we got an election coming up. We're going to have a bunch of, uh, race riots in America. What I've been waiting for, you see when they surround the cars, like in, you know, Manhattan, all these places. Where, sure. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's like this stupid, like I want the people that surround the car to eat the people in the car. <laughs> the, the, the true final <laughs> realization of the zombie apocalypse. Like we've made the joke that we're approaching it, but you want to see it formalized. We and like it like it's not like I'm I'm all, if you watch it they all sort of like lumber around like like it, the super you ever you seen this at this super slow pace and stuff they don't even act like people when they're doing this thing surrounding the car this is like political activism I guess but uh, these uh, po quote unquote political activists that we're supposed to act like are are um you know they're human beings and maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're not they're, bog, bog, bog beef depersoning uh you know uh liberal political activists very basic well, well i mean if if people acted like that you know at your work or something you know you'd call the police say that there's some guy who's on who's on drugs or something i don't know what Astles, the whole, yeah 
I don't know what all the lumbering is, but they sort of like just move in this weird, strange way and stuff. I want them to pull a guy out, pull, you know, pull some, uh, uh, you know, somebody on vacation here from Europe or something and pull them out of the Land Rover and just eat them on the street there. That would be, we'll have broken to the next level. Thank you. Well, guys, now that we've gotten to, I think, the pinnacle of political punditry, uh, let's go ahead and transition over to the questions of the people. But before we do, can you tell everybody where to catch the good old boys podcast so they can keep up on the latest in cannibalism? If you can go to, if we're still if we're still a podcast after this airs, you can go to <laughs> patreon.com slash good old boys with a Z and you can find us there. You can also find us on Spotify. Our free stuff's on Spotify. The, you know, the, the, the good stuff you got to get on Patreon. Sign up for. I'm just glad that I could bring this discourse to the blaze. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like this is, this is the hard hitting <laughs> stuff. Glenn Beck's audience probably just doesn't get enough of this. So I, yeah, I'm glad I can really uh, turn them on. <laughs> I'm beep in front of the chalkboard. <laughs> with my cannibalism. Well, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to incite, uh, I'm trying to incite you to, to, uh, you know, do another one of those, uh, don't, please stop eating people, uh, uh, shows or whatever. PSA. That was that was a highlight with uh, with um, Ostracon. That was a great one. Yeah. I'll, I, I'll always I'll always think that. Yeah. Also, we'll be on Twitch uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Bog underscore beef. Uh, uh, good on old on twi- on X and um, our our merch is at wbsapparel.com. White boy summer. Excellent. All right, guys, let's switch over here to the questions of the people. Uh, Arthur T says, Forgot, uh, forgotten is how regional America was during this time. Social media 24-7 news cycles weren't a thing. The trial was televised nationally a first, and to see the different reactions of the verdict was an awakening of sort. Yeah, that's it's true. You know, obviously, we say this all the time, but the regional character of America has been dissolving ever more rapidly. And there had been events before the OJ trial, of course, that did bring the different uh, regional uh, aspects of the United States together did give it a more unified culture. Uh, But you definitely did have a moment where in the OJ trial, a lot of people who were not familiar with some of these dynamics, who were not familiar with some of these tensions uh, at a national level, suddenly recognized that. And it became aware, they became aware of the fact that a guilty man who murdered his wife might walk free just to alleviate some of these tensions. And regionally, that was quite an awakening for many people who are probably not familiar with that aspect of of kind of uh, some of America's social dynamic. We've got uh, Creeper Weirder here says, I'm a wrestling fan. My OJ was Chris Benoit. Was he the one who murdered his family because he was on steroids? Yeah. Yes, yeah. He uh, yeah, they said that his brain was like a four-year-old. He, his... um. This is one of those things, you know, when they do the top rope moves or whatever, I always thought like, I just never, I guess I didn't really think about it. Like, I guess I thought like, well, wrestling's fake. So when they do a move off the top rope, like, I don't know, it's fake or whatever, but, uh, you know, I like macho man. There's this video going around where, uh, uh, my, when macho man's getting older, uh, is what happens is rest. So when, when they do the elbow drop off the top rope, like macho man would do. Uh, basically someone is getting that impact. And when, and when he's younger, when the wrestlers are younger, basically they land on their knees and as macho man getting older, his knees hurt. And so he starts landing more on the elbow. Uh, he did an elbow drop on a guy on a uh, little Nate and like it IRL, uh, uh, punctured his lung and just like did massive damage to him. Uh, and so, like, uh, there's a ton of impact from these top rope moves. So that Benoit guy, his finishing move was jumping off the top rope, landing on his head on the other wrestler. And, you know, the guy that he was sort of inspired by to do this, he told him, he said, like, don't do this. You're going to scramble your brain. Like he said, your uh, your brain, your head is not meant to handle this. Do not do this. And he that was his finishing move. And uh yeah, he said that there was just nothing left in his brain. Horrible creature. All right. So we've got uh Paladin YYZ says, uh still can't uh get past the idea that there was formaldehyde in the blood drops found at the scene. If that's true, 
They got it from the blood OJ gave them. Difficult to just dismiss that. I got to say, it's been a long enough time where I'm not like up on all the OJ conspiracy deep lore. If there's like a, you know, if there's a 9-11 was an inside job thing for, for OJ, I, I just don't know all the details to, you know, refute that or, or you know, speculate that one way or another. Yeah, I mean, the alternative is this: somebody else murdered his wife and the LAPD instantly decided to frame him for the murder and then OJ, for some reason, became suicidal and went on a, a long ride and threatened to kill himself and read a suicide note to people. And yeah, that's, I to me, that's pretty easy to dismiss. But, you know, that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, it feels like OJ would be a very strange target if you're going to pick anybody uh, for, for this kind of setup, but. Uh, Creeper Rita says OJ leads to Jerry Springer. Is that what you guys are saying? Yeah, I don't remember no. the exact the flow J there. Jerry was was existed. What what TV executive realized? So the thing about Jerry Springer show is uh, it got great ratings and it was very very cheap. Uh, that formula basically expanded all across all across tv uh, through mm -hmm. news stations news stations just became jerry springer after after oj because people just could not stop watching this and like they weren't just watching the trial they're watching all of these like uh you know these charismatic analysts the tot mom lady all this stuff uh uh you know checking in what's going on checking in uh mm -hmm. that's that's just not how like news just did not work the same way when and if you should, if you listen to this channel, you should know that uh, news is not just what happened in the weather and stuff. This is how you control democracy. When, when I was a kid, I had to, my parents worked, so I would stay with my grandparents after I got off the school bus. And that that entire half of a year when the trial was on, my grandfather watched every second of it. Uh, he was a guy who only watched sports ever. That's all he ever watched. He watched ladies golf or what, if that was on TV. He would you couldn't get him to watch a sitcom or a movie. But he was enraptured by that. What 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 happened was they discovered that you can market this to literally everybody. Everybody will tune into this. You can you uh, hit all new markets and you can just pr and produce the stuff so cheaply. That was the big the big thing. The, the average the average person might not have watched Jerry Springer at the, at that time, but they watched the true crime stuff. And yeah, here we are today. Was, I mean, we are participants in the take economy. You know, we could be, yeah. too, could be the descendants of the OJ uh, trial in, in some some fashion, uh, you know, dressing it up with our fancy intellectualism. But there's a, a, another sort of funny echo with Merrick. Do you know if he was on police squad? He was in the Naked Gun movie. He wasn't yeah, in the show. He was, he was in the Naked Gun movie for sure. Uh, okay, so uh, like two, like last year, the year before, whatever. I I I always love the Naked Gun movies. Uh, he's fun. Like uh, OJ basically gets horribly maimed and killed in all the Naked yeah. Gun movies. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, I want to go check out this police squad thing. Because if you watch those movies, you sort of get the idea. You're like, oh, there was a TV series you watched, of uh, police squad. So you're like, wow, I like the movies. There's a whole TV series of the naked gun i watched like the first episode and i was like this is the funniest thing i've ever seen <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant and I, like i was like they made like a, a like one season of it or something a Man, half a season. why why do they do that allegedly this is, I, I, we had the conversation about this a long time ago allegedly one of the reasons why they canceled it was a network executive said this show like this show is too too smart for the average TV viewer. They're not going to get it. They're not going to enjoy it. So they, that's why they canceled. That was that was the the story. I I, I think you know the, the, that is very funny in relate in relation to all the OJ stuff. But uh, you know, I, I what it feels like to me is it was expensive because it was it was lit like a like a movie and stuff like that. Anyways, that all goes on to like why like OJ gave us reality TV, gave us all these these characters. Mm -hmm. um, by the way. Our guy Donald Trump is a reality TV guy. Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know if he becomes president without Juice. Again, his, his picture <laughs> had to be removed from Juice's house. A picture of him and and, and Trump had to be removed uh, so that he didn't seem too white. <laughs> um, Ed here says uh, an unrecognizable group uh, harmed by OJ. Of course, are fans of the Naked Gun series. I would never look at Nuremberg. Okay. Uh, Paladin YYZ says, uh, Bukele's War was a fantastic show. 
why is that uh why is uh why is it that every time a chad populace rises to save his people he has a great mustache bog and Orin have great mustaches what are you guys doing in 2028 yeah i mean i i have to go up against the macho man here in the, the pfp so i'm gonna lose uh for for the great mustache uh you know kind of base populace uh showdown uh but uh, yeah that does seem to be a, a prerequisite if trump had had a more fantastic mustache we might be living in a very different america I, have you seen the ais where they give uh uh trump a beard looks great yeah i saw that oh yeah it, it looks really cool not everybody has a uh, not everybody has a, i don't have a uh i i i, I, I when I, I every time i try to grow a beard it gets itchy in like the first two or three days and I, I give up on it. i'm like uh, f this uh but um yeah i don't have a real i don't have a beard but uh, here's what i'll say about the mustache though um you know, if you look at the great aristocrats who like part of their job was being cool and looking badass, like your job is to be the most badass looking human being possible. What do they do? They have some big ass mustaches. <laughs> All right, here we've got Evan M. Did you uh, did you that the reporter in the helicopter during the Bronco chase became the stunning and brave woman? who grabbed Ben Shapiro by the collar. Is that true? Cause that's an amazing piece of lore. If that's correct. Is the, the, the guy who grabbed him in the uh, Dr. Drew interview. Is that the, is, well, is that the case? I'm not sure. I don't I'm know, not familiar I don't know with that, is. that happening. Well, there was the famous, so he, oh, he's on like that? CNN or something where with Dr. Drew and uh, he says he won't use the pronouns and uh, a, a trans uh, whatever uh, 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 is like, oh, you're gonna call me Mrs. and like grabs him. Uh, you know, he looks like a looks like a, a fullback and like grabs him. Uh, Yo yokes him up. It. And like it was like a um, <laughs> it, it it had like this uh, uh, you know, the old black and white movies that had like the the physical comedy, right? right. There was like this chart, like a uh, 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 three Stooges aspect to it because um, Ben Shapiro's a, a, a small fellow. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah and, yeah and i don't know how big this person was but they looked you know he looked like andre the giant grabbing the comparison the, yeah yeah it was fantastic great <laughs> great you can actually scene. see like the neck hair you know as he's like lifting yeah it's, uh, yeah quite, quite the dynamic uh, and shapiro, look, shapiro looked like he was getting choke slammed by the undertaker <laughs> uh, I, there's nothing i love by the way more than um Alex Jones doing the it's ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. The, the man is a meme factory to be sure. All right. Creepy Rita says, are you guys saying that uh, uh, they put the woke away? They started the fresh prince. Uh, then we could return to the zombie fresh prince checkmate or. Yeah, I, I keep feeling better and better about the uh, uh, about my cigar. Uh, Warhammer officially went woke yesterday uh so you know games workshop is you know uh finally gave in to their mm. uh their their lib tendencies uh and so we didn't even get into that but uh but i feel like the woke continues uh to march forward but yeah I, well you know part of me has 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 no real uh sympathy for um people that would play such a brain dead faction like uh, uh like uh, uh custodies <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you just go sit on the, the center, uh, uh, the center dot and just, uh, 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 you know, win the game or whatever. But, um, I don't know, you know, as a space Marines player, you know, it just feels good. Yeah. Now we're officially the men's division. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as someone who's played, uh, played Eldar for a long time and as you know, I play an army whose only weakness is bullets. Uh, so I've never under, I never stood the ability to, uh, you know, have a, a army that could take a hit. But I guess well, I don't play anything now. I haven't played 40k in, in quite a while. I got, but. I did some commentary on this, and I I finally got the Sargon reply. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> I, I I was posting, which by the way, um, I can't think, of, I can't remember the model's name, but I mean, uh, you know, in my opinion, it's going to take them a long time to wokeify a uh, uh, Warhammer. I mean, even if you wanted to, um, what is like uh the big centerpiece of uh Slanesh's uh, Chaos Demons? is well i mean if you were a like a even just a progressive liberal but especially if you were someone who believed in like gender equality or in fact like a, a transgender rights or something you would see the art of that model as something 
deeply offensive. <laughs> deeply offensive. For sure. Uh, yeah. And uh, furthermore, like throughout the series, and you could take a look at like uh, uh, what the backstory. And so anyways, I wrote like, I was like, okay, so the, the backstory behind the Drukari is that um, uh, they were normal elves until their civilization fell into uh, sexual uh, depravity. And they started worshiping the god of transgenderism. That's literally their origin story. Yes, and uh, it made them, you know, uh, these pleasure-seeking people and destroyed their, their, their civilization. How, where, how do you wokeify that? Where do you go from there? You got a long way to go to dig yourself out of that hole. I mean, in the same way that you just go ahead and insert, like, you know, dudes in wheelchairs into D&D, like it, you're you're right that the the lore is inherent. I mean, the entire 40k storyline is you know basically the emperor is like this Reddit atheist who tries to wipe out all religion and then discovers uh, actually that not only is religion real but the realest gods around are like the gods of chaos who are all like the worst aspect of leftism. And so like the 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 Imperium of Man has to become a base religious order that like constantly battles against uh you know the worst impulses of the leftoids uh, it's hard you think it's impossible to make that woke and you're right that you can't actually maintain the lore and, and, and make it work but they'll just destroy it they'll, they'll just destroy everything that it actually uh was about as someone who doesn't know anything about 40k when i hear uh the storyline where the the elves begin to worship transsexual guys and and, and fall into ill repute sounds like a 2025 dimes square social media narrative yeah <laughs> well no i mean it's 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 the cyclical view of history is it like it, it is the like uh total well, hub of victory by the way <laughs> that's right yeah, this, this is the future yarvin wants like this is the you know this, this is the 40k uh ter terrible uh <laughs> warhammer is like it's the final boss of nerd uh lore and literature is it, it is the best it is the, the highest standard it's it's basically it beats everything else and why because it's so heavily informed by uh basically military history world history and like uh, uh the the cyclical view of history yeah i mean it, when when half of what you're doing is just ripping off the most base elements of things like dune uh you're you're gonna end up in that scenario uh, all right, Krupper Weirdo here says, uh, Paw Patrol politics. Yeah, that was the reference that, that Yarvin made, the insult that he was making to Rufo. Again, I'll, I'll definitely get into that in depth on Friday. And he also follows up with, the problem with Police Squad is that you have to watch it, TV, TV executives. Uh, that, that is a real problem uh, if you want people to pay attention to your show. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Of course, if you are not watching or listening to the good old boys, you have to do that. Go fix that immediately. And if this is your first time on this channel, of course, please go ahead and subscribe. Make sure that you turn on notifications, click the bell, all of that stuff. And if you would like to get these broadcasts as podcasts, make sure that you subscribe to the Aura McIntyre Show on your favorite podcast platform. When you do, leave the rating or review. It helps with the algorithm. And the book is only three weeks away from release, guys. So please go ahead and make sure to pre-order the total state over on Amazon. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.